Hello, Dr. Dave Webster, and this is part of my ongoing video blog series about the travesty of lack of access to PET CT in Ontario. I'm going to be showing you a, sub, a, a series of short case examples uh, of the impact of not having PET uh, access in Ontario means for patients. Now, I have been told by Cancer Care Ontario that I must not show case examples to physicians or patients. And perhaps after seeing some of these case examples, you'll understand why Cancer Care Ontario does not want you uh, to see the terrible consequences not having access to a PET CT can have on you, the patients. Once you've seen some of these cases and based on the facts, you can decide whether the Ford government's claim most recently made by Ms. Christine Elliott, Minister of Health, tweeting 2019 in January, we're there to improve public health care, whether that's the case or whether what I believe to be the case is that they're there to protect the incomes of politically powerful allies that could be negatively impacted by the proper introduction of PET-CT. Now, what do I mean by properly introduced? Way back when I was the president of the Ontario Association of Nuclear Medicine in 2004 and 2005, we repeatedly told the the government that this. OHIP should only pay for diagnostic imaging tests that have a reasonable chance of advancing the patient's uh, management. So a little, couple of few facts for people who may not be as familiar. PET scanning or positron emission tomography has been the accepted world standard of imaging management for cancer and many other diseases in some cases for 20 years and in places like Turkey, Chile, Argentina, and Paraguay. Uh, but what PET scan allows us uniquely to do is directly image cells metabolizing various molecules. Now, one of the most useful substances is plain old uh, ordinary glucose. We make a slightly altered form called fluorodeoxyglucose, or FDG. Deoxy means we've removed one oxygen and in fact replaced it with a radioactive fluorine atom, and thus we get these pictures here. Don't be fooled by these fuzzy pictures. There's a lot of information in there. Uh, this is the heart tissue, liver, spleen, for example, and that's the cancer rate there, other cancers over here. Now, typically, PET is fused with a low-dose CT scan, more recently with MR scans, but it allows us to image where that glucose is being metabolized, and now we can clearly identify this is in the heart. Uh, there's a cancer rate there and, and over there as well. The important fact for you to remember is that Ontario patients have the least number of PET scans per thousand population of anywhere in the world where PET is available. But the bad news for you is that up to 90% of the OIP indications are the exact opposite of world expert body of opinion. And in these case examples, you see what, what that means for patients. So this is a 52-year-old female with abdominal pain and swelling, and this will demonstrate why the rest of the world would do the PET CT typically before undergoing the high-risk biopsy. So here is a coronal image of her abdomen. Um, this is one slice out of the CT scan here. This is her liver up here. This is staples from previous surgery. This is large bowel over here. However, uh, this is a large abdominal mass that shouldn't be there. So her physicians order a CT guided biopsy. But you, what you need to remember is that a CT has absolutely zero ability to know where to put that needle within that large mass. They don't know whether it's all cancer or just parts of it. There's simply no way of knowing that. So a CT guided biopsy is, is a safe procedure, uh, but it, it's a bit stressful as you might imagine. Not too uncomfortable. But here's the CT scanner here in the physician. This is the kind of needle they use, but because they can only position outside the, the, the radiologist, outside the CT scanner, the radiologist blindly puts the needle in, in and out, and in and out until he's happy with the position of that needle, which may be anywhere from five to ten or more in and outs into that machine. Here is the patient's ch anterior chest wall. This is, you can see, that needle biopsy going into a lung mass there. And again, it's, it's safe with experienced radiologists, but obviously there's potential risk for, say, collapsed lung uh, bleeding, and in the case of an abdominal biopsy, bowel perforation, and rarely we would see death. So our patient does undergo the CT guided biopsy, no complication, a little stressful and uncomfortable. This is a, the needle going through, you can see the track where it has gone into the mass there. However, after going through all that, the biopsy comes back negative in just non-specific scar tissue. But how could that possibly be? So let's go to another video I've made. This is an 83-year-old female. It's clear she has cancer of the lung and metastasis widespread, but the oncologists still need tissue for biopsy so they can determine the the right medications they might be able to offer for some treatment for here. Um, so this is an actual picture again. This is actually the patient's back this time, the front of the patient, the clavicle. This is the sternal clavicle joints. This is her hand, and that's, you can see, where the needle was placed. However, during the procedure, as certain is a risk, high risk in patients who are chronic smokers, her lung collapses. The result for her is that she needed a chest tube insertion, and this is the kind of procedure she went through. As you can imagine, not a very comfortable procedure, and it's already highly stressed, and patient sure of breath with this process. Now she spent several days in hospital and will be weeks recovering. But the bad news after going through all this, the biopsy is negative. How could that be? 
Well, here's again that picture, and remember the CT has no ability to determine where that needle should be placed. Here is the PET CT fused image. Anybody have trouble deciding where that needle should have been put? Uh, if they'd have put it here, there's a good chance they would have been able to have a positive diagnosis, even if the patient did collapse her lung. Now back to her patient. Uh, we have we discussed her rounds. The patient's obviously very anxious. She knows there's cancer, but they don't have tissue. They're trying to decide what to do. We're going over the CT during the case discussions, and the oncologists are pushing the radiologist to say, look, there's a couple of enlarged lymph nodes in the groin. Do you think they could be cancer? But again, CT only can talk about size. And so he says all he can say. They are minimally enlarged lymph nodes, which are non-specific. So they're now this patient is undergoing biopsy of these nodes, uh, little lymph nodes. But let's go back to that lung cancer patient. This is the original scan. This is the cancer spread here, heart over there. But it turns out there's a little spot right up there. Where is that? This is the right clavicle, the patient's right shoulder. This is their thyroid gland. This is above the patient's clavicle. This area right here, quite visible. Now we literally could have taken that patient and put her on our kitchen table, use some sterilizing solution, and if we couldn't palpate it, use an ultrasound, put a needle in there, and we virtually certainly would have had a full diagnosis and workup on this patient with minimal discomfort and stress. Now, that's why the rest of the world does the PET-CT first, because it in, not infrequently will demonstrate a safer and more appropriate site to biopsy. Quite clearly, this patient never should have had that lung biopsy. However, Ontario uniquely insists patients must have a biopsy before they can have the PET scan. And you can decide for yourself why they might want that. But these are uh, the CORD government's uh, quality care, uh, quality of healthcare advisors. This is Dr. Ruben Devlin and this is Dr. Andreas Lepakos of Quotes Health Quality Ontario. And you can decide for themselves why they think this is quality healthcare. But the Ford government simply does not want these patients to have access to the world standard of imaging management. And so Cancer Care Ontario has been told, make sure they don't get access access. Now, as I said, once you've seen some of these cases, you can decide whether the Ford government is dedicated to improving uh, health care in Ontario or something else. And you can decide based on the facts. This is my website. Please visit it. Get the information out. Otherwise, you may be the next victim of these politicians and their medical advisors. Thanks for listening.